Today I am so happy to bring to you the one year review of my ultimate holy grail watch and that is of course the Rolex Lady Datejust in 28mm with the oyster seal and yellow gold. Now it's been almost a year since I unboxed this beauty right here on my channel and you can check out that video, I will link it below. I honestly had only ever dreamed of owning this watch and I just cannot believe that I was able to unbox it and own it and that it is mine. And since that unboxing last year, I've been pretty much wearing it every single day. And so I thought actually now that it's approaching the year mark that it would be the perfect time for me to reflect on my experience owning this Holy Grail watch and share my thoughts on it and whether ultimately this watch is still worth buying considering the recent price increases and the also increased exclusivity of the Rolex brand. But it's probably worth me putting a disclaimer right at this point before I get started that I'm by no means a watch expert. I'll give you as much information that I have at my disposal. But so, you know, if that's not necessarily enough technical details, then you can always consult Rolex's direct website or other watch connoisseurs out there. And it's probably worth me just just giving you a quick summary of how I'm going to be organizing this video. So I'll start off with a bit of a history about the Rolex watch and I'll also talk a little bit around why I bought this Lady Date just in particular. I'll also throw in some mod shots and things if relevant and I will go through the specs, what you get with the watch, the price of course because I know that will be something that a lot of you will want to know about pros and cons, and then finish with some wear and tear, final thoughts, that kind of thing. So there's quite a lot to get through. So let's start off by talking a bit about Rolex as a brand and also the Lady J Just. So I think it is pretty much an understatement to say that Rolex is probably one of the world's most, if not the most recognizable luxury watch brand out there at the moment. You obviously can tell from a mile away, this little crown is a Rolex watch. But obviously Rolex watches are well known for a reason. But obviously Rolex is well known for the exceptional craftsmanship, the meticulous attention to detail and their commitment to precision and because of that they've basically solidified their status as a symbol of recognition of quality of prestige and the lady date just that i'm wearing is no exception at all to this reputation and it's why these watches are so coveted so at this point in the video it's probably worth me doing a very quick voiceover around the history of rolex as a brand and also the emergence of the lady date just itself and this is by no means going to be an exhaustive timeline that you can peruse online at your own leisure but i will talk through some of the highlights that are the most relevant for today's video so for those of you that may not be aware rolex was actually established in 1905 by hans wilsdorf and alfred davis in london and it specializes obviously in the distribution of timepieces that we all know and love today and Hans's dream was actually to design a watch worn on the wrist and wrist watches at the time were not very precise or very popular for that matter but Hans had a vision that he could design a wristwatch that was not only elegant, but also reliable. And it was in 1908, after many various combinations of letters in the alphabet, that the Rolex brand name was born. And very soon after the Rolex brand name was established came a number of very significant milestones to the brand. Now, I won't go through all of them because we will be here for a while. But of course, Hans's quest for the chronometric precision took him through several milestones such as designing the world's first waterproof wristwatch, establishing the iconic Rolex Oyster watch, as well as many other feats such as swimmers, pilots, divers, and many, many other significant people wearing the iconic Rolex brand. To which we then arrive at 1945, where the first date just watch was born. And this was the first self-winding wrist chronometer to indicate the date in a window on the dial. And this particular date just was equipped with a Jubilee bracelet created specifically for that watch, as well as the iconic fluted bezel, making it immediately recognizable as a Rolex watch. Now, if we go back to Hans's original vision for this wristwatch, obviously there was a very big challenge at the time of wristwatches being perceived as fragile items of jewelry for women, but he was determined to offer women as well as men a choice of modern, dependable wristwatches. And the Lady Datejust was the first step along that journey. 
Now let's fast forward to 1957, which is a very milestone year because in that year, Rolex unveiled a chronometer specifically designed for women, a watch with certified accuracy featuring a date display. And that is where the Lady Datejust was born. It was another landmark in watchmaking because it was the first ladies watch of the Rolex date chronometer. And it was a big tribute to Hans's enduring vision that ladies want the best of both worlds, a tiny watch and an accurate movement. And I think it is safe to say that Hans did deliver on this vision. An heir to the Datejust, the Lady Datejust concentrates all the attributes of the Datejust, but in a smaller form size perfectly suited to a slender wrist. And so began a series of marketing campaign efforts appealing to the modern woman, combining glamour with precision. Now, when it comes to the size of the Lady Datejust itself, as of 2020, the smallest size of watch that Rolex produces in this model has a case diameter of 28 millimeters, as is the watch that I personally own. Both the Lady Datejust and the smaller size for the Oyster Perpetual Collection now have case diameters of this size, but 26 millimeters was actually the classic size of the Lady Datejust for many, many years. So if you were to go on the vintage market, there is no doubt that you will be able to stumble upon these smaller case sizes. When it comes to the hardwares and the different designs that you can get there is definitely something for everybody if you are the sporty type a two-tone steel and gold model would be perfect or indeed if you are on more on the girly or feminine side the diamond set model with a mother of pearl dial will more than take your fancy i'm sure and of course there are so many different combinations that you can bespoke online on rolex's website to make the watch truly your own and I'm sure it goes without saying that no matter what you choose, the look will be unmistakably Rolex. It's very, very special in the Rolex lineup because it's very elegant, it's sophisticated, and it's obviously introduced for the market that is women because it is a smaller size and it exudes a sense of understated luxury, I suppose the quiet luxury that you're seeing nowadays or stealth wealth. It's very clean looking, it's got clean dial, it's got a fluted bezel, it's obviously got the iconic Cyclops lens and the proprietary date window at the three o'clock section. So now that we've talked a little bit about the Lady Jake Just, I think it's probably worth talking about why I decided to buy this watch as my first high-end luxury timepiece. Now I must say, if I'm being brutally honest, I wasn't actually in the market for a lady date just. I was actually looking for the regular date just actually in the 31 size. I believe that's also a very popular size. But obviously these kind of things with waiting lists and whatnot just never work out in your favour. You'll wait years without getting a call back, especially if you don't have kind of purchase history and I suppose segueing into how I got this watch. It was one that I was offered actually at Charles de Gaulle Airport. It was a duty-free purchase. It was just on a transit actually when I was actually making my way to Cuba for a holiday. And I saw this Lady Date just in the small size, the 28, and I was just blown away. So timeless, so classic with a watch actually that was pretty much almost the same spec that I'd wanted in originally in the date just but a shrunk down version way more elegant less gaudy so now let's talk about the actual specs of the watch we will get a little bit technical in this section i'm by no means an expert i will say that again i do have a lot of information actually on my trusty laptop in front of me so that i don't butcher everything but um, obviously you can consult the actual website for more detailed information on the lady date just in terms of the ones that I suppose are the most useful or interesting, we can start by talking about the case. So we have a 28 millimeter case. It's crafted from oyster steel and yellow gold. And so it's a perfect balance between the classic of the gold and the modern with the silver. And it's just a really versatile watch because of that mixture of hardware. Now let's move on to the bezel, which of course is the iconic fluted bezel. It's a, such a distinctive Rolex feature. You can see it as I move it around. The bezel is glistening it really is so so stunning special and distinctive around the Rolex the bezel is actually screwed onto the case to make sure it is waterproofed so basically this is fashion and function which I really really love and now let's move on to the dial by which it's also very much glistening in the light and we do have a silver gray colored dial it does have flecks of kind of champagne as you turn the watch and it's actually got roman numerals for the hour markers there 
I do like the classic nature of Roman numerals, rarely do you get that in modern watches. In terms of the actual face, we've got a silver dial, and you can see also they, that we have some ref light reflections as well, so it's definitely a watch that you all know from a mile away what it is. I love the fact that it's silver in terms of the face, but it also has almost like a champagne gold uh, reflection as well, depending on how you look at it, depending on the lighting situations. And it's actually based on very delicate brushing techniques that I think are done by hand. And essentially the way that they brush it is in such a way that when you then move the watch around, it reflects the light um, in almost like, yeah, this kind of light ray effect. Then we've actually got the gold roller saw which is this little guy here which is obviously how you then adjust the date and the times so now let's move on to the bracelet and as you can tell we have an oyster bracelet here and this clasp has also the easy link comfort adjustment so you can adjust the width of the bracelet by up to five millimeters so i've actually adjusted it already to be a little bit smaller so you don't actually have to take a link out especially to make this fit so if you are in between i suppose link sizes that is a great option for you and it allows it to be extended without having to get those removed. I will also put on screenshots around the other technical specifications, but I suppose some of the more interesting ones as well is that we have a scratch resistant sapphire crystal encasing with the proprietary Cyclops lens over the day. We've got water resistance up to 100 meters or 330 feet, which has come in handy. In terms of movement, we've got perpetual mechanical and self winding. So that's also great. You don't have to use batteries, which can be a total nightmare. I've had that in the past. The precision is about two seconds either which way after the casing so we do have great accuracy and precision that is what Rolex is known for and there are plenty more details in here probably way more that I could rattle off but this video will be very long and I'm not sure that it will be that interesting to all of you out there so you can by all means go ahead and consult the website. Now a lot of you will wonder at this point in time, well actually Mel, how much did you buy it for? So I actually bought this particular watch, like I mentioned last year, and it was around tax free price anyway, £6,700. For the specific price, I believe it was actually retailing around £7,100 or 200 and of course, like I mentioned before, I had bought that particular watch at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris during a transit. So I managed to also get that tax free. I found Charles de Gaulle to be a very nice place to buy it from. I don't know if it was just because I was lucky because I got on with the sales assistant and or just because I was lucky that they had stock that day. But I find it's very, very difficult to buy Rolexes just in a Rolex store or a department store in your home country. It's always very elusive. It is obviously maintaining that air of exclusivity. So a lot of times I feel like you have to get a buying history and build a relationship with a sales associate before you even get offered the watch that you want or you have to wait many, many years. But it was only a few months later that I was able to tick that off my wish list and get it in the airport. So I would recommend you consult that. Uh, as a first port of call if you do want to roll it sooner. Nowadays, fast forward a year, we have definitely seen some price increases as is kind of customary, isn't it, with these sought after luxury goods. So actually on the Rolex website, this particular model, the late date just 28 in the always still yellow gold is actually retailing for around £8,300. So obviously that is a significant bump, especially but if you are lucky enough to be able to happen upon one of them, I would just recommend definitely buying them because they are definitely investments. And there are obviously many, many cases of people buying Rolexes and if they need the money at some point in the future or want to sell it on, then obviously you might be able to fetch the same price, if not more. So with that price in mind, let's actually explore what you get when you invest in this particular watch. So obviously alongside the watch itself, you actually get this very plain looking outer presentation box that contains within it the iconic green box. And it's made of leather, I believe. It smells divine. And obviously inside that you've got a little cushion and little presentation for your watch that goes here. And then outside of that, of course, you have a little storage of documents in this hidden kind of pouch here. And within that you've got the Rolex warranty documentation. You've obviously got your 
card here of authenticity but also um with its reference numbers as well you've got the manual in terms of the actual date just itself with a few more details on the watch how to use it the guarantee worldwide service document and obviously you've got this certification little dongle thing here so we do have some very useful bits of documentation that should definitely be kept very very safe so now that we've gotten all this kind of admin out of the way let's talk about how i've actually been finding the watch how i've been styling it etc and honestly i have been wearing this every single day it is no lie i make it a point to wear this with pride you have so many possibilities for styling and because it's so versatile especially with the mixed hardware i find that it looks very very classic but also modern and because of the two-tone nature of the watch it's suitable for a wide range of occasions so i've never struggled with whether it's for work whether it's for evening events for days out holidays even running some errands i make it a point to wear this watch it basically almost looks like a normal bracelet like a piece of fine jewelry anyway and because it's also waterproof it just gives me the convenience and peace of mind that i need such as you know if you're caught on a holiday and you're by the pool and you don't want to just necessarily leave your watch on the side it's a very expensive watch it's just nice that the watch is not only versatile from a style perspective but also from functionality and i'm definitely by no means a person either that just buys something expensive and just leaves it just to admire it from afar i definitely wanted to get the use out of my watch i'm very pleased i really have gotten the mileage out of it i've been hiking with this watch i've been swimming with this watch i've had so many celebrations and key milestone events that i've celebrated with this watch and so there are just so many cool stories that i have when i one day pass it down but this just leads me i suppose into a great segue to the key section here which we are now in which is around the pros and cons of the lady date just so, and obviously one of the biggest pros that i found in this particular watch is regardless of the occasion or whether it's day or night this is a timelessly elegant watch and it's such a classic design it will never get out of style beyond that timeless appeal the lady date just really has the potential to become an heirloom that can be passed down because you know it doesn't date itself and obviously Rolexes are known for that craftsmanship and the durability. So they'll definitely be lasting symbols of family history and tradition. And now let's move on to another big pro for me and that was around quality. It's no good when a brand is, you know, all style and no substance. I feel like in this case, however, every single aspect of this watch from the precise movements to the fine intricate details of the design, it just showcases Rolex's commitment to excellence and the, impeccable craftsmanship and attention to detail that goes into every single Rolex watch. And obviously one of the main appeals of Rolex is that it basically is built to withstand the test of time. You don't need loads of Rolex watches. You can get one and it doesn't really need to be replaced. So it definitely is a worthwhile investment. And for me, you know, I'm not necessarily a watch collector. So even if I just have this one Rolex watch, it will last me a lifetime. Now let's talk about a more technical pro of this watch and that's the precision and the reliability of it. So obviously it's self-winding mechanical movement. It's the Rolex Caliber 2236. And so it means that timekeeping is super accurate. There's a very generous power reserve. And so you get peak performance. I've never had an issue with reliability. I've never missed a meeting or woken up late because of it. So I'm definitely an advocate of this particular watch and a spokesperson for the quality. I can attest to that. And then in terms of another pro, I think durability is also a big one to mention. So they use obviously very high quality materials. You've got the scratch resistant sapphire crystal. You've got the oyster seal detail as well. So the watch is going to be long lasting. The crystal face I find in particular has not received a single scratch at all. And I wear this, like I said, every single day. So that is really, really impressive to me. And then let's move on and talk about versatility of the watch, which obviously I've alluded to many, many times. And I think the combination of the oyster steel and the yellow gold really does add that touch of luxury and versatility, which for a watch that was just a plain hardware, I don't think it would have and achieve the everyday wear that I have managed to get thus far. And it complements so many styles and occasions so effortlessly. And it also complements, but can be also a standout piece worn alone. And now let's move on to a more functional pro, and that is water resistance. When you consider the fact that it can be waterproof for up to 100 meters, it's just ideal for any 
everyday situation if you're caught in a downpour or if you're by a pool or something so it just gives you that peace of mind and the convenience of wearing this watch to anything rain or shine and finally let's move on to a very important point and that's around resale value so one of the biggest advantages of owning a rolex lady date just is that it's very very strong in terms of resale value and obviously rolex watches as a whole have a reputation for holding their value and even appreciating actually over time so that means should you decide to sell it or trade in your lady date just in the future you can expect a pretty good return on investment and coupling those factors with the ever increasing prices and also exclusivity you're basically going to get a guaranteed return on your investment for at least the amount that you paid for if not more now let's move on to the cons and obviously we've mentioned price before as a pro in terms of the investment factor but obviously price is also going to be a con for those of you out there that are experiencing the aggressive price increases and this has made it therefore more exclusive and more costly to own a watch which was you know a fraction of the price many years before so that is one that i thought to mention because obviously you know unless you're the super rich getting a rolex watch will be very difficult from a cost but also time perspective if you're also having to build relationships as well it's not something that you can just get you know from the store unless you're very lucky like i somehow was but you know with all that being said however it's important to consider the fact that there is long-term value and prestige associated with owning a rolex watch and i do think having owned one for this long that it is worth the weight it's worth the investment and you know if you can get it from the second hand market or if you're lucky to get it from an airport or something then that is a way that you can circumvent the additional cost and time associated with trying to get your hands on this watch even with the increasing prices i do still think that the rolex watch personally at least is worth it and i do think that i managed to get my particular watch for a steal of a price so i by no means found price to be a con now another con might also be the size so this particular watch obviously being a 28 millimeter case might be considered too small for some of you out there even in in the beginning i thought 28 might be too small i actually found you know i don't have a very significantly sized wrist i have a relatively small wrist so actually it balances really well it almost looks therefore like a bracelet because you know it's quite small it's quite thin uh, but obviously if you do prefer a larger size there are bigger you know regular date just out there and you know i think there's even smaller date just if you do want smaller so there are plenty of options out there for you and actually i would not you know turn my nose up at a 28 millimeter just because you think it's small you might be quite surprised by actually trying it on so i do believe you know even if you can't buy a rolex outright in a store you are very much at liberties to try them on for size so i definitely recommend that now let's talk about availability which is obviously a very big con we've talked about this already and i'm sure many others out there as well lament the fact that acquiring a rolex can be very challenging there's potentially waiting lists or limited availability across the board but you know getting a rolex i feel like is very rewarding i don't feel like i had to play a game in my personal experience and i do think actually well, there's a will, there's a way. I mean, I even just came back from Japan and there are tons of secondhand and barely used Rolex watches that are on offer in just like the main streets as well. So you can definitely get those at a good price and not have to play the game. Now, another one is just very personal and specific to my case. And actually this is scratching with the Oyster bracelet. Now, I think this is a significant drawback that some people might find, you know, to be putting them off this particular model especially on the back where actually I've gotten a fair few scratches actually on the clasp because you know if I'm on at a desk and typing then obviously my hand is resting it's moving it's scratching and you know just general wear and tear rubbing etc if I'm walking around so obviously this is something that you can obviously try and prevent with you know regular maintenance and polishing and just general care but sometimes i feel like it cannot be helped especially with this bracelet type it's not like the jubilee which is a little bit more covered up i suppose um so that's just something to consider if you are thinking of getting this watch with the oyster bracelet but you know for me i find that scratches are a natural part of life it's what's giving my watch character and to be honest if it makes this watch less desirable to be stolen then I'm all for it. So I personally don't find it a problem. And obviously by the nature of owning items in general, whether luxury or not, you're going to have wear and tear. You know, one day we're all gonna leave the surf anyway. So it's not even like we can take those uh, goods with us. So enjoy them while you can. And then the final con that I have, and 
it is a big one, I suppose. For those of you out there who are maybe looking for something a bit more understated is, I suppose, the flashy nature of the watch. So obviously from a security perspective, the Lady Dick just might not be the most kind of understated, even though it's not like a Submariner or a Daytona. It still has a fluted bezel. It still has the sundial effect on the face. So it could attract attention. Certainly even from friends, you know, they've said, you know, oh, is that a Rolex? Because they know the brand. If they will know, and they're not necessarily watch connoisseurs at all, then, you know, the normal passerby or even someone with bad intentions will obviously uh, see this. But obviously this comes as a risk to anyone who buys anything high value, anything luxury. So I think buyers just need to be discerning and use a bit of common sense when it comes to selecting a watch and wearing it out and you know being mindful of your surroundings and things like that so you know i won't wear this watch for example in a dodgy area i won't wear it if i'm going to be going on a night out and you know if i'm drinking a lot of alcohol which i don't really anyway but if there is a risk of that i just wouldn't wear the watch and obviously if i'm doing like physical activities and whatnot i won't wear the watch so it's just a bit of common sense around this kind of stuff and obviously if you're going for a rolex Rolexes are, by the nature of them and the designs, very recognisable. So I suppose this one is a little bit less recognisable. It's not as gaudy as some of the ones that are like diamond encrusted or whatnot, or have crazy dials and things on them. But obviously with the nature of owning anything luxury, it's bound to be recognisable. So it's not really much you can do about it, but obviously just be safe and secure in how you care for, maintain and wear your items. So now that we've covered pros and cons, and you can obviously make your own informed decisions, I'll just end this video by talking about the uh, wear and tear, how I've currently gotten on with it. And obviously I'll include some close-up shots as well. The crystal face, we have no scratches on it at all, which is honestly astounding given how much I wear this thing. And it is in impeccable condition on the front. The clasp, the bracelet is obviously where you see the wear. It's not the greatest, but honestly, I don't really care that much. And to be honest, you cannot see it, you know, from far away. And you can see that also on some of the clasps, but you can get this polished. On the inside, you know, I don't really have that much wear and tear. I'm not sure that you'll be able to see it from here, but I'll try and insert clips if I can. There are some wear, some small scratches, but again, it's on the inside of the watch. I don't really care so much outside of you know wearing the watch on my wrist i go ahead and store my watch in basically a watch winder box and that just keeps it running for when i'm not wearing it and it's also good for storage because obviously i don't want to be storing it flat and having the hardware rubbing against each other and i suppose you know just applying some common sense around um cleaning cloths to you know polish the watch but apart from the scratches there is nothing else um, to note around the watch itself. The face is beautiful. It's still very, very shiny, still very, very stunning. So, so with all that being said, that brings us to the end of today's review video. I think one year on, this watch continues to exceed my expectations as a luxurious and timeless watch. I mean, despite even the price increases, despite the exclusivity, all that being said, I personally still find this watch to be worth the money. Even at the current price, I think under 10K for an a Rolex watch, one of the most recognizable, or if not the most coveted in the world, I think is a steal. Obviously in inverted commas here because relative to, you know, what other watches cost. But I do think if you're gonna get one watch in your lifetime, absolutely go for it. I think if you can get it tax free, like I did, even better, it makes the cost a lot more palatable. It is fashionable and functional. I get so much wear out of it. It gives me so much joy. And even if people find it uncomfortable to look at or too flashy, that's not my problem. I worked for this watch, I earned this watch, and I will enjoy my watch. Ultimately, it's an investment piece. It's an heirloom. And I just cannot wait to share all the stories that I have with this particular watch to so my future loved ones. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the Lady Date Just or indeed Rolex watches in general. Do you think that they're worth the money? Do you think that they're worth the hype? Other than that, thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you in my next one.